Good morning. I'm Dr. David Richardson. I'm a cataract and glaucoma surgeon in Southern California. Today I'd like to talk a bit about narrow angle glaucoma. So let's get going. So here in the United States, narrow angle glaucoma is actually, or has actually been in the past, uh, relatively uh, unlikely. So most glaucoma in the U.S. is what we call open angle glaucoma. Uh, narrow angle glaucoma in which the, the angle, which is um, uh, the angle between the underside of the cornea and the top side of the iris, uh, is narrow. Now the reason why narrow angles versus open angles uh, is an important distinction is that the trabecular meshwork, that's the drainage grate in the eye, um, and I use that term uh, with the knowledge that it's far more than just a drainage grate, but uh, for ease of discussion, it's, it's where fluid drains out of the eye. Now, if that space just on the side of that, that grate, the trabecular meshwork, is, is narrow, it, it restricts flow. Whereas if it's a nice open angle, rather than a narrow angle, um, the flow then is not physically restricted, at least to the trabecular meshwork. Now in open angle glaucoma, the problem is actually at the trabecular meshwork. So the fluid can get to the trabecular meshwork just fine, but it can't get through the trabecular meshwork. In a narrow angle anatomy, however, the problem is even getting to the trabecular meshwork. If the angle narrows sufficiently, then it can actually do what's called close. Now, narrow angles and uh, closed angle, both uh, what we call chronic angle closure as well as acute angle closure, so chronic over long term, acute over very short term, um, narrow angle glaucoma tends to be far more common among Asians. Uh, so in Asian countries, such as China, it's actually the most common form of glaucoma, whereas traditionally here in the U.S., uh, it's been uh, far less likely to encounter narrow angles. Um, that is changing as our demographics change. Uh, so what's important to know is that with narrow angle uh, anatomy, you can have uh, pretty severe fluctuations in the pressure, which are not necessarily uh, symptomatic. So the individual with narrow angles may not even know it, uh, which over time can result in damage to the optic nerve. Um, now, this can be relatively difficult to catch unless someone is seeing an ophthalmologist uh, on a regular basis and having the angles actually uh, evaluated either at the slit lamp that's the exam microscope with a an exam called gonioscopy or with a type of scan called OCT optical coherence tomography now those who have chronic chronically narrow angles are at risk for loss of vision but what we worry about in general the most is what's called an acute angle closure. Now, an acute angle closure is when the angle narrows so much that it closes off. And once it's closed off, there's no, there's no feedback loop. There's nothing telling the ciliary body, which produces fluid, to stop producing fluid because the fluid can't get out. So the fluid just keeps getting produced building up in the eye, it can't get out, which further closes off the angle, and you can end up with a very high elevation of pressure in a very short period of time. Uh, indeed, in, in a matter of hours, the pressure can go up um, into the 50s, 60s, 70s. Uh, it's been measured as high as the 80s. The normal is generally below 20. Now, when you get above 50, uh, you actually the pressure in the eye gets so high it can actually cut off the blood supply. You can stroke out the the tissue in the eye. Um, so a an acute attack of angle closure is a medical emergency because the vision can be lost permanently in a matter of a very short period of time, hours. Uh, so what are the symptoms? Because unlike chronic angle closure, which can be symptom-free, an acute attack of ankle closure 
tends to be symptomatic, but the symptoms are not always obvious. So uh, obvious symptoms would be uh, blurred vision or a red eye or a painful eye. Um, you know, those are, those are things that you should know, ah, something's wrong here. Uh, but there are more subtle symptoms uh, that may not be associated with uh, obvious loss of vision or pain. So other symptoms include such things as seeing rainbows around lights is one, uh, or just a headache, uh, or nausea, or even vomiting. So you can have nausea and vomiting without eye pain. So there have actually been uh, people who've gone to the emergency room for nausea and vomiting, worked up for uh, stomach issues, uh, and what was really going on was, was angle closure. So that's why it's important to know about your anatomy so that if you have any of these symptoms, if you're at risk for angle closure, you know what to look out for. Now, for those who have an acute attack of angle closure, uh, the treatment is generally an, a, an in-office laser treatment, although sometimes it does require going to the operating room uh, in order to make a hole in the iris so that fluid can get from behind the iris into the angle and then out the trabecular meshwork into the uh, drain, into the uh, Schlem's canal and then out through the collector channel system. Now, if it's not treated right away, or there's been chronic angle closure in addition to acute, then sometimes the iris can actually scar down to the trabecular meshwork, and even with creating that opening in the iris, it may not be enough, in which case other surgeries may be necessary. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is that uh, we're now discovering that removal of the natural lens, which tends to push up against the iris and narrow that angle, uh, the removal of the natural lens itself can be a very effective treatment for narrow angle anatomy. And so for those with narrow angles, we are now moving uh, earlier and earlier toward removing cataracts, even when the vision may not be at the level where we would normally consider cataract surgery. So one of the things that, that an individual can do in order to avoid uh, or, or reduce the risk of angle closure, acute angle closure, is to have the anatomy checked out in an ophthalmologist's office. And if the angle is already narrow, uh, to go ahead with the laser procedure, which is called uh, laser peripheral iridotomy, uh, in order to prevent closure. Now, it's not 100% prevention, but it, it does a good job of preventing it in the majority of those who have narrow angles. One other thing I'd like to point out, for those who have narrow angles, um, they really should avoid over-the-counter cold, allergy, sinus, or uh, anti-nausea seasick medications, because most of those medications uh, tend to further narrow, narrow the angle, placing someone at risk of developing angle closure. Uh, so uh, fortunately, most of these medications now have warnings on them that say, if you have narrow angle, do not take. But in general, uh, just try to avoid those if you have narrow angles, uh, especially if you've not yet had uh, prophylactic preventative laser peripheral iridotomy performed on your eyes. Uh, if you have had laser peripheral iridotomy, depending on how the angle anatomy changes after the laser, you may be okay to take those over-the-counter medications, but again, that would be something that would need to be assessed by your ophthalmologist, either at the slit lamp or with OCT, and uh, if sufficient opening has occurred after the laser, then it may be okay to go back to uh, some of those medications. Um, I, I know for those who have bad allergies and, and, uh, and a bad cold, and right now we're in the cold uh, flu season, uh, that's not what you want to hear. <laughs> it's miserable enough having any of these things without not being able to treat them. Uh, but the, the risk of a permanent loss of vision uh, is, is just too high if, if you are at high risk. Uh, so anyway, uh, there's a lot more that I could say about narrow angles, uh, both uh, chronic and, and acute, but I think um, that, that's a good place to end today. All right, have a great day, and uh, I'll be chatting again soon.